Hello, my fellow Creality users. I'm sitting here today with the all new Creality Spider version three, high flow, high heat, hot end. Next to me is my beloved Ender 3 Max, my favorite of all the Creality printers. This fancy hot end boasts printing up to 300 degrees and 300 millimeters a second. It's no coincidence that with the explosion in popularity of the Sonic Pad, whose main focus in its marketing is speed, that Creality would release two new Spider hot ends, one of them aimed specifically at high flow for higher speed printing. It would appear to be Creality's goal to get these high flow hot ends into the hands of its Sonic Pad users. I do think it's time for the hot ends in Creality machines to step forward, especially since it's been proven that the older machines are going to stay with us for many years, with some of us still using Ender 3 Pros on a daily basis. That said, Ender 3 Pros, Ender 3 version 2s, CR10s, and others in that lineup are still functioning and still in use to this day with very old, very cheaply made hot ends, and it is due time that they get an upgrade and there's a better option for us to work with. To do this, in the past, we've had to go to third-party hot ends. Doing that requires all sorts of modification. Even the original Spider hot end was super difficult to install, required you to print your own shroud, and many times people found it just didn't work out. So here we are with the new Spider 2 and the Spider 3 that claims to be a plug and play installation without the problems of the previous Creality Spider, without the problems of other various third party hot ends. Let's find out if that's the case. Here's the kit, it's got this fancy foil etched printing on it and it's held together by one simple Creality sticker. All right, here it is. Let's pop it out of the box. It's nestled nicely in this little piece of foam. Here is the original Spider, and here is the new Spider 3.0. Pulling off the heat sock, you can see the heat block and the nozzle on the original Spider. And here is the new Spider. The difference is immediately obvious and significant. Everything about the new Spider has been redesigned. And even the heat block itself is much leaner and sexier on the new Spider 3. Here you will see one of the biggest changes in the new Spider. The original Spider is much taller and fatter than the stock hot end, which caused a lot of problems for people when trying to install it, especially considering the lack of support that Creality gave for this hot end. As you take a closer look at this hot end, you'll realize just how much better it is. Every component is considerably improved over the stock hot ends in our machines. Even the rubber boot feels like an extreme leap in quality compared to the cheap ones that are on our stock hot ends. Let's see what else is in the box. There's been some confusion over whether or not it comes with the thermistor. And it does indeed come with the thermistor. Looks like the thermistor comes attached to an extension cable. So I suppose if your hot end thermistor is plugged into a cable like this, you can simply detach this and plug it into your existing cable. However, if it doesn't, you have this extension cable to plug it straight into your board. Inside the box, we have one spare nozzle and a little bag of goodies. Inside the bag of goodies is some thermal grease, a quality wrench, a quality Allen key, a couple of screws, a couple of more screws, a coupler clip, an interesting little tube, a couple of more Allen keys, and a coupler fitting. Oh, and of course, a coupler. These are the directions. That's it. Nothing else. So let's toss this aside and figure out how to install it ourselves. Here is my Ender 3 Max hot end. We're going to go ahead and take this housing off. And there it is, the stock Ender 3 Max hot end. 
Let's get our Bowden tube out. Be careful as we want to reuse it. I should point out, you might need to heat the hot end in order to get this Bowden tube out. And I'm gonna trim just a wee bit off the end of this Bowden tube. There you go. Looks like there's some filament in there, but I'm not concerned with that. As long as it's not melted, it will just come right out later on. Next up is to very carefully get our wiring out. Oddly, this screw is a Phillips. There's one. And the next one is underneath. So I will remove the hot end to make it easier to see. After hundreds of hours of service, here is the OG hot end. We are going to take this little black eye off right there. Your machine may be different, but the tool that came with the Spider 3 will work. You don't have to unscrew it, just loosen it a little bit and separate it from the thermistor. And there you have it, the original hot end. A far cry from the new hot end we'll be installing. If it's installed, let's go ahead and get this rubber block off. Okay, now this is where things get interesting because the hot end came with its own thermistor. However, the instructions instruct you to reuse the glass ball thermostat that came stock with the machine. Better yet, if you watch their YouTube video, it tells you to crimp this over the glass ball thermostat. These instructions tell you to use thermal grease over the glass ball. The video doesn't show either. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a try. We are going to install this over the stock glass ball thermostat and I will apply thermal grease to this because the purpose of thermal grease is to help better conduct heat from one surface to another. Looking behind the hot end, you will find the heat tube and the glass ball thermistor. I'm going to put a touch of thermal grease on the glass ball thermistor and then I'm gonna slide this metal tube over the glass ball thermistor. The instructions don't say how far to go. I'd say I got about halfway easily. Now I'm just gonna take a pair of needle nose pliers as also shown in the Creality video and crimp this in place. So there you have it. Using the occluded adapter, I have basically recreated the thermistor that came with the Spider 3 using the stock Ender 3 Max thermistor. Now it's time to install this guy. We'll take these longer screws, feed it through, and get it going. We will now install our Bowden tube by pulling this right here and pushing our Bowden tube down into the nozzle. You clip back on, and there you go, your Bowden tube is installed. Next up is our heating tube and our thermistor. Okay, before we install the thermistor and heat tube, please note that the spider silicone boot only has holes on the left side. So you need to route the wires on the left side of the spider, or else you will not be able to put the silicone boot on. Before we install the thermistor, slide it into your thermal grease bag and just give it a little rub. Don't be shy, get it all covered in thermal grease. Now we're gonna slide the thermistor and heat tube into their slots. Grab your little tool and tighten from underneath. Make sure they feel good and snug and they can't come out or wiggle. And now it's time to put the silicone boot on. Again, you'll note the holes are only on one side. They go around these wires. All you do is simply wiggle it into place. 
Boom. Now we carefully put the fan cover back on. And we're done. And there it is, the Creality Spider 3 high flow, high heat hot end installed on a stock Ender 3 using the original thermistor, the original heat tube, and the original fan cover. The only thing left to do is give it a test. Creality recommends setting your retractions down to five to avoid clogging. So we're gonna go ahead and do that first. Okay, so here we are in Cura. We are going to choose the Ender 3 Max profile. And now I am going to go ahead and set the retractions to five as recommended by Creality. I will set my infill pattern to lightning and my infill density to four and my speed at 50, uh, no supports. I will use a skirt just so I could judge that first layer and slice and dice. One hour, three minutes and a whopping six grams. Let's do it. Okay, now this is super important. Anytime you change your nozzle or anything involving your hot end, we have to check our Z offset. In other words, the Z height. In other words, the distance between the bed and the nozzle during printing. That's super important. And it's very important that you understand it's during printing. When you press home, it will go to roughly 10 millimeters over the bed. It won't go to zero. Keep in mind zero is zero in addition to any Z offset adjustment. This is why so many of you think your Z is okay and then you go to print and it drags into the glass because it doesn't apply your Z adjustment until it prints or you manually move the print head to zero. We're gonna do that right now. Clicking on your menu, go ahead and press auto home. You don't have to worry about your nozzle during homing because your probe will detect the bed and set your home. And there it is. However, we are not homed at zero. We are homed at roughly 10 millimeter. You can see that by pressing your menu, going to motion, choosing move axis, and choosing move Z. When you click on a denomination, you will notice it says plus something. Mine says plus 12.9, which is my original height plus my Z offset. So we are going to set that Z offset now by taking a piece of paper and sticking it under our nozzle. We are going to take our Z and move it down to zero. Unless it's gonna hit the bed before it gets to zero. In which case we would stop. But there we go. It's on the bed, it's a little tight. So we're gonna to go to our Z offset adjustment. This may be in a different place for your firmware. For mine, there it is under advanced and probe Z offset. And I'm gonna just bring it up a touch until it feels less tight. And there you go. I like that resistance right there. I'm gonna stop and I am going to save. Now I'm gonna run a quick ABL. But first, I'm going to preheat the bed choosing preheat PLA bed. Your firmware may only have preheat PLA, which will do the bed and the nozzle. I'm going to just do the bed. Then I'm going to go ahead and run an auto bed level. I always manually save my settings. I don't trust anything. And it's time for our test print. 
I'm going to go ahead and print the dog. Keep in mind, we do not trust our Z offset until we see it print a first layer. So we are going to watch the purge line and the skirt, and we are going to fine tune our Z offset at that point. Once this thing starts to print, you are going to switch into your tune menu and you're going to go to your Z offset adjustments and be prepared to make adjustments. Okay, so here we go. Be prepared. Have your finger on the knob and be ready to adjust your Z offset. So I'm using the skirt. I always use a skirt. Take your finger and rub it. Okay, see how it's moving? It's too high. So we're going to baby step down. Just little bits at a time. Rubbing the skirt. See it's still moving. Until we get it to stop moving. Once it stops moving, you're good. And there we go. If it's still not quite right, you can continue on your first layer. Once you get it right, just cancel the print and start again. So far it looks pretty good. I got it set just in time. And there it is, we've installed the Creality Spider version 3, high flow, high heat, hot end on an Ender 3 Max using no modification whatsoever and successfully completed a test print on our very first try. I'm really impressed with this and it's very exciting that for 60 bucks you can refresh your older printers with newer technology hot end while also unlocking faster speeds and higher temperatures. Those of you pushing the limits of your speed with Clipper or a Sonic Pad will really find this hot and beneficial and it's definitely worth taking a look. You're on the 3D Rundown YouTube channel. I'm Greg Adventure, your instructor on 3drundown.com and installing the Creality Spider 3 High Flow High Temp Hot End was today's adventure.